After studying this module, you will be able to know about the significance of drug metabolism, various pathways for the metabolism of drugs in body, and lastly, the stages and processes of drug metabolism. Xenobiotic metabolism, which also includes drug metabolism, has become a chief pharmacological science with actual applicability to biology, therapeutics and toxicology. Drug metabolism is also of pronounced significance in curative chemistry because it influences in qualitative, quantitative and kinetic terms, the deactivation, activation, detoxification and toxification of the vast majority of drugs. As a result, medicinal chemists engaged in drug discovery and development should be able to integrate metabolic considerations into drug design. To do so, however, requires a fear or even good knowledge of xenobiotic metabolism. Drugs are considered as xenobiotics and most are extensively metabolized in humans. Drug metabolism displays the biotransformation of an endogenous or exogenous molecule by some or added enzymes to moieties which are more hydrophilic and can be effortlessly expelled out. Metabolism of a drug usually lessens its capability to give out a pharmacological action. It can also be a consequence into metabolite which has significantly greater potency and thereby contributes to the overall pharmacological effect of the drug. In the case of prodrugs, biotransformation is required to produce the pharmacologically active metabolite. Understanding the metabolism or biotransformation of xenobiotics has come to be regarded as fundamental to appreciating the toxic mechanisms of chemicals, be they drugs, industrial chemicals, pesticides, or any other molecule that is foreign molecule to the body. Metabolism is an integral part of drug elimination. As well as facilitating excretion of a drug, it may also affect the pharmacological response of a drug by modifying its potency and or the duration of action. Next about the sites of drug metabolism. Xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes are present greatest in the tissues of the body with the maximum levels found in the tissues of the gastrointestinal tract that is the small and the large intestines and liver. Drugs which are verbally directed, absorbed by the gut and taken to the liver can be comprehensively metabolized. Liver is known as the main metabolic clearing house for individually endogenous chemicals such as the steroid hormones, cholesterol, proteins, etc. and xenobiotics. The high concentration of xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes located in the epithelial cells of the gastrointestinal tract is responsible for the initial metabolic processing of most oral medications. This should be considered the initial site for first pass metabolism of drugs. Now, we will study about the pathways of drug metabolism. Metabolism of drugs is accomplished in two distinct phases. First is the phase 1 reaction or the non-synthetic phase. Phase 2 metabolism is categorized as the functional phase of the drug metabolism. The reactions carried out by the phase 1 enzymes customarily may result in activation, 
change or inactivation of the drug. This involves a transformation in drug molecule. It involves the oxidation, reduction or hydrolysis. Next is the phase 2 reaction or the synthetic phase. Phase 2 enzymes enable the elimination of drugs and the inactivation of electrophilic and potentially toxic metabolites produced during oxidation. This phase comprises of the formation of the conjugates with drugs and their metabolites made during the phase 1 reaction. The formation of the conjugates takes place with the endogenous substances, for example, amino acids and carbohydrates. In case of phase 1 reactions, the resultant is the biological inactivation of the drug. A better water-soluble metabolite is produced with increased molecular weight in the phase 2 reaction, which functions to expedite the elimination of the drug from the tissues. Next, we will study in detail about the phase 1 reactions. Phase 1 reactions are also called as the non-synthetic reactions. These reactions may occur due to reduction, oxidation, hydrolysis, cyclization and decyclization, removal or addition of hydrogen carried out by the mixed function oxidases repeatedly in the liver. So first here we will study about the oxidation. In it we have cytochrome P450 monooxygenase system. The cytochrome P450 superfamily that is CYP is a large and diverse group of enzymes. The oxidation of the organic substances is catalyzed by most of the CYP enzymes. The substrates of CYP enzymes comprise mainly the metabolic intermediates, for example, the steroidal hormones and lipids, and also the xenobiotic substances, for example, drugs and other toxic chemicals. The P450 dependent monooxygenase system is central to the metabolism of most xenobiotics. Not only is it that the crucial enzymatic system for metabolism of several xenobiotics, but it is also involved as the preliminary functionalization step in the further metabolism of many others. Accordingly, P450 plays essential roles in a number of areas of research including biochemistry, pharmacology, toxicology, physiology and medicine. On primary assessment, it seems that P450 can catalyze an incomprehensible number of reactions. However, on closer inspection, a degree of commonality exists among these reactions. The first area of commonality is that most of the reactions represent oxidations. Second, the reactions transform lipophilic substrates to more hydrophilic products. Third, many of the reactions can be understood as hydroxylations. Next is the flavine containing monooxygenase system. Tertiary amines such as trimethylamine and dimethylamine had long been recognized to be metabolized to N-oxides by a microsomal amine oxidase that was not dependent on CYP. This enzyme, now known as the microsomal flavine containing monooxygenase that is FMO is also dependent on NADPH and oxygen and has been purified to homogeneity from a number of species. Isolation and characterization of the enzymes from liver and lung samples provided evidence of undoubtedly distinct physicochemical properties and substrate specificities proposing the manifestation of at least two different isoforms. Subsequent studies have substantiated the presence of multiple forms of the enzyme. 
most FMO substrates are also substrates for CYP. Since both enzymes are microsomal and need NADPH and oxygen, it is challenging to differentiate which enzyme is responsible for oxidation without the use of methods involving a specific inactivation or inhibition or one or the other of these enzymes which concurrently examining the metabolic involvement of the other. Now third here is the alcohol dehydrogenase and aldehyde dehydrogenase. Alcohol dehydrogenases catalyze the conversion of alcohols to aldehydes or ketones. The alcohol dehydrogenase reaction is reversible with the carbonyl compounds being reduced to alcohols. This enzyme is found in the soluble fraction of liver, kidney and lung and is perhaps the most important enzyme involved in the metabolism of foreign alcohols. Alcohol dehydrogenase is a dimer whose subunits can occur in several forms under genetic control as a consequence giving rise to a large number of variants of the enzyme. The aldehydes are produced from a variety of endogenous and exogenous substrates. Endogenous aldehydes may be formed during metabolism of amino acids, lipids, carbohydrates, vitamins, steroids and biogenic amines. Aldehyde dehydrogenases are vital in facilitating to improve some of the toxic effects of aldehyde generation. This enzyme catalyzes the formation of acids from aliphatic and aromatic aldehydes. The acids are then available as substrates for conjugating the enzymes. Fourth is the amine oxidase. The most significant role of amine oxidases seems to be the oxidation of amines formed during normal processes. Two types of amine oxidases are concerned with oxidative deamination of both the endogenous as well as the exogenous amines. The monoamine oxidases are a family of flavoprotein found in the mitochondria of a wide ranging variety of tissues such as brain, liver, intestine, kidney and blood platelets. There are a set of analogous enzymes with coenzyming specificities and inhibition. Although the enzyme in the central nervous system is concerned chiefly with neurotransmitter turnover, that in the liver will deamine primary, secondary, and tertiary aliphatic amines reaction rates with the primary amines being more rapid. Electron withdrawing substitutions on an aromatic ring increases the reaction rate, whereas compounds with a methyl group on the alpha carbon such as the amphetamine and ephedrine are not metabolized. Diamine oxidases are enzymes that also oxidize amines to aldehydes. Secondary and tertiary amines are not metabolized. Diamine oxidases are characteristically soluble pyridoxal phosphate containing proteins that also contain copper. They have been found in a number of tissues including liver, kidney, intestine and placenta. Next we will study about reduction process. Several functional groups such as nitro, carbonyl and disulfide sulfoxide, diazo, alkene and pentavalent arsenic are prone to reduction. Although in many cases it is difficult to tell whether the reaction proceeds enzymatically or non-enzymatically. By the action of such biologic reducing agents as reduced flavins or reduced pyridin nucleotides. In certain circumstances such as the reduction of the double bond in cinnamic acid, the reduction has been 
credited to the intestinal microflora. Next about hydrolysis. Enzymes with carboxyl esterase and amidases activity are widely distributed in the body occurring in many tissues and in both microsomal and soluble fractions. Many xenobiotics and their phase 1 metabolites contain a carboxyl ester, an amide bond or an epoxide that masks hydrophilic functional groups such as alcohols, carboxylic acids and amines. Hydrolysis generally contests with other detoxification reactions but esterases are in very high content in many tissues especially liver and their affinity is low enough such that esterase or amidases mediated hydrolysis typically predominate. Now we will study about the phase 2 metabolism. Products of phase 1 metabolism and other xenobiotics containing functional groups such as amino, hydroxyl, epoxide, carboxyl or halogen can undergo conjugation reactions with the endogenous metabolites. These conjugations being jointly termed as the phase 2 reactions. Conjugation reactions typically consist of metabolite activation by some high energy intermediate and have been broadly categorized in two types. The first type that is the type 1 in which an activated conjugating agent combines with the substrate to produce the conjugated product and the second type that is the type 2 in which the substrate is activated and then combined with an amino acid to yield a conjugated product. The formation of sulfates and glyoxides are examples of type 1 whereas type 2 consists primarily of amino acid conjugation. Next is the gluconide conjugation. The gluconidation reaction is one of the major pathways for elimination of many lipophilic xenobiotics and endobiotics from the body. The mechanism of this conjugation involves the reaction of one of many possible functional groups with the sugar derivative that is uridine 5-diphosphoglucuronic acid. Glucronide conjugation by and large results in the formation of products that are less biologically and chemically reactive. This combined with their better polarity and greater susceptibility to excretion contributes prominently to the detoxification of most xenobiotics. However, there are at present many models where gluconide conjugation results in greater toxicity. Next comes the sulphate conjugation. Sulfation and sulphate conjugation hydrolysis catalyzed by many members of the sulfotransferases and sulfatase enzyme superfamilies play crucial roles in the metabolism and disposition of many xenobiotics and endogenous substrates. Reactions of the sulfotransferase enzyme with various xenobiotics including alcohols, aryl amines and phenols result in the production of water soluble sulfate esters that often are easily eliminated from the organism. Although commonly these reactions are important in detoxification, they have also been shown to be involved in carcinogen activation cellular signaling pathways, prodrug processing and the regulation of several potent endogenous chemicals including steroids, catechols and thyroid hormones. Next is the glutathione S transferases or the GSTs. The GSTs are family of enzymes that catalyzes the preliminary step 
and are extensively distributed being found in fundamentally all clusters of alive organisms. Although the best known examples have been described from the soluble fraction of mammalian liver, these enzymes have also been described in microsomes. The preliminary reaction is the conjugation of xenobiotics having electrophilic substituents with glutathione, a reaction catalyzed by one of the various forms of GST. The complete sequence, mainly the preliminary reaction, is exceptionally important in toxicology because by removing reactive electrophiles, vital nucleophilic groups in macromolecules such as proteins and nucleic acids are protected. Next is the methyl transferases. The most common methyl donor is sardinocell methionine that is SAM which is formed from methionine and ATP. Even though these reactions may involve a decrease in water solubility, they are generally detoxification reactions. Now I will summarize all that we have studied in this module. Firstly, drug metabolism is also of pronounced significance in curative chemistry because it influences in qualitative, quantitative and kinetic terms the deactivation, activation, detoxification and toxification of the vast majority of drugs. Next, metabolism is an integral part of drug elimination as well as the facilitation excretion of a drug. It may also affect the pharmacological response of a drug by modifying its potency and or the duration of action. The high concentration of xenobiotic metabolizing enzymes located in the epithelial cells of the gastrointestinal tract is responsible for the initial metabolic processing of most oral medications. This should be considered the initial site for first pass metabolism of drugs. The two types of amine oxidases are concerned with oxidative deamination of both endogenous and the exogenous amines. The monoamine oxidases are a family of flavoproteins found in the mitochondria of a wide ranging variety of tissues such as the brain, liver, intestine, kidney and blood platelets. Catalysts for xenobiotic transformation are incorporated into phase 1 and phase 2 reactions. Although occurring primarily in the liver, other organs such as kidneys, lungs and dermal tissues have large capacities for these reactions. The phase 1 reactions involve hydrolysis, reduction and oxidation of chemicals to more hydrophilic, usually smaller entities and the phase 2 reactions follow with glucuronidation, sulfation, acetylation, methylation and conjugation with amino acids of the phase 1 metabolites.